Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a being known only as Day Nine. He wore brown shirts with expressionless faces on them. You're getting closer to him by the minute because, oh my god, oh! It's Day Nine Daily number 246. It's Fun Day Monday. Ordinarily on the Day Nine Daily, we learn to be a better gamer. But on the best day of the week, on Monday, we dick around. Yes! How y'all doing? I'm pumped to be here. I have my cubes of ice. It's not full. I'm not going to get any sort of lubrication on the throat this time. It's going to have to be all me on this epic episode of the Fun Day Monday. So for any of you who are unfamiliar with the Fun Day Monday, it's where we impose a ridiculous constraint upon you lovely viewers in an effort to both get you to think creatively and outside the box and get you to do insane things and have crazy games that we would not ordinarily see because it can be so constricting to try to be cool like the pros. But we don't want to be cool, we just want to have fun, so that's what this whole good business is about. And this week's Fun Day Monday is oh so simple. You may never take your natural expansion, period. You cannot ever, 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 ever expand to your natural expansion. Some people interpreted this to mean that I just cannot expand. Not entirely accurate, you just cannot take your natural. So let's go ahead and do an introductory example of what this is. It should be this one. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now, as usual, the first episode of every, or excuse me, the first game of every Fun Day Monday is to give everyone an introduction to the Fun Day Monday theme, which is, of course, no natural expansion. One of my most exciting things to see for all the men and women and zombies who are tuned in today is to see someone do a build order that is reasonable under the guidelines of the constraint. To do something that is, of course, not stupid. Now, if you do something stupid, it has to be both stupid and entertaining, or, of course, it does not get picked. Either way, we will see what uh, what I'm talking about in just a moment. We got T-Bone on the left here. Oh, did not have the best Supply Depot placement initially. Goes ahead and cancels and replants down. Here is Miscellaneous or misc over here in the right corner as the good old blue protoss pieces fantastic t-bone all right cool now let's try to think about this we're on the map metalopolis a lot of expansions can be taken can be taken except this one you can't take that one so how do we not only circumvent this problem but also use it to our advantage oh yes let us see exactly what he ends up pulling out. All right, so it looks like that good old cancel successfully allows the probe two entrances in there. No problem. He will eventually clog those holes with his ingenuity. We do have the cybernetics core going down for miscellaneous. He's chrono boosting probes. Appears in the myth mythical land of Metalopolis. Our good friend, the probe, hanging by the Zelnaga Watchtower. Is anything exciting there? No, nothing noteworthy here, Captain. Nothing embarrassing to the public. To see, Captain. Oh, whew, that was a close one. That's cool, man. I played it off cool. It wasn't no thing. Reactor going down for T-Bone. Good. And now here's something that's a little bit of an interesting twist. This is something um, that I found uh, at least moderately arousing. Uh, we have an early engineering bay popping down. Now, I think everyone's always seen the Terran players who like to open with the Trirax, right? Everyone knows the Trirax play. But look at this very fast plus one weapons upgrade. Oh! One of my favorite things about StarCraft II, when the game is paused, is the fact that people are slowly developing more and more senses of timing and positioning. So much of the time in StarCraft II, just because it's new, and just because people don't know any better. It's all about who makes the right units. Ha oh, ha, I built Immortals and you did not build Immortals, so God, I smashed you so hard. And that's the sort of thing that it's like, oh, I guess I need to make more Immortals next time. Well, uh, people know that Marines and Marauders early on are good, but now all of a sudden, timing is working its way into it. Not just Marines and Marauders, but getting the plus one upgrade early. Mmm. Mmm. Smooth timing. We like that. Very cool. So when I saw this, I was like, yeah, T-Bone. Yes. Indeed, T-Bone. There's the probe uh, making its way through one of the multitude of entrances at the front of T-Bone's base. More Mariners being made. Stim going down. Looks like there's going to be another tech lab popping down. And we have approximately... The amount of minerals it takes, or excuse me, minerals and gas to get both of these essential upgrades. We have a timing push coming up. I just dig this chili so much. Here is the uh, observer popping out right now. I mean, really, the brilliance of T-Bone's play is paramount. Seriously. Uh, rarely has a Terran player played so well in, in all creation, as far as I'm concerned. StarCraft 1 or 2 Pro Gamer or Amateur or, or 
uh, zombie otherwise. I'm going to make a lot of zombie references today. I I'm just sort of feeling it. I'm just sort of in that zone today. So, of course, here the plus one upgrade finishes. Would have loved to see the uh, at least advancement towards his base a little bit earlier on. <laughs> Can the supply depot that doesn't exactly wall anything off, just makes things uh, form a limbo line. But I would have liked to see this timing push advance a little bit earlier on because, honestly... Oh, oh I'm not going to hide. I'm going to hide that for a moment. Hoo -hoo, shh, you didn't see anything. Uh, because honestly, honestly, you want your upgrade to finish right as you're about to hit his base. You don't want your upgrade to finish and then for you to spend all that time walking. You want it to happen very, very, very well, 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 clean time. And here we go. We have Command Center going down. a boy, T-Bone. That's what I'm talking about. This is what we call a well thunk out build. Now, Miscellaneous is doing the good old uh, never expand ever, make tons of units no matter what, and probably when 90% of my games build. T-Bone making a Command Center. He's continuing to churn out Marine. Marines and Marauders. It looks like he's continuing to make some supply depots. A little bit behind? No way. He's on time. It's going to hide up here on the high ground. Uh-oh. And it looks like the push is coming out by Miscellaneous. The Expo's going down. One more Immortal coming out, dude. Oh, no. Here, they're advancing forward. This is actually an extremely potent army mix against almost any infantry because the Zealots, they're usually so slow and picked off by that concussive shell upgrade, are no longer a threat because you all got range. And you easily throw down many a force field. And we have more barracks coming down by T-Bone. This is so well thought out. And look at this. Right as he gets 150. P, 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 P. Oh, there's a planetary fortress. Look out, T-Bone. 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 Pause in the action. Let's go ahead and just get a, a little glimpse of exactly what's going on. I think that for every single race, there is that, oh, come on, moment um, where all you can do is just beg. Um, such as the target fired robotics facility with the 90% done Colossus, and you're just spamming your chrono boost on it. It's like, come on, just get out, Colossus. Please get out, please. Please get out, Colossus, or like Planetary Fortress, or Banelings. Has that ever happened? You morph some Banelings, they attack, you pull the Zergings back, morph some more Banelings, and they go up to that patch. Pull it back to your ramp, lose your natural. Come on, Banelings! It's like such a stressful period of time. Come on, come on, get it done. Come on, one time, one time. This is, oh! And he's stimming, he's pulling back, but as the Immortals get to the front, oh my gosh, he's gonna get all picked off. He's doing huge amounts of damage. He's trying to stim forward, he's trying to pick off the Immortals. No, it ain't gonna happen. Get there, get there, get there, get there! And, oh, see you later. Ain't no problem. And of course, T-Bone was uh, had the delight of being able to build this planetary fortress because he got this engineering bay early. Notice that that timing push of the plus one, that never actually came, but just the general timing push of it, lines up so well with the idea of getting this planetary fortress early on. And then huge mass barracks play makes a lot of sense, so that way we can bounce back and forth between our center lucrative gold expansion and our back main. And of course, as usual, T-Bone has the usual issue with gold expansions, which is that people are blown away by exactly how much money they end up getting uh, often a surprise to oh so 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 many people there's the observer of course checking everything out um miscellaneous trying to poke around and i want you to kind of acknowledge how good and standard what miscellaneous is doing the the big um the big gateway the big warp gate with immortal mix but uh-oh getting overrun miscellaneous doing a great job uh, just sort of doing the usual defend the front. Void Ray is a little bit more of a modern transition, a little more interesting uh, than the usual Colossus mix. But, you know, I do think T-Bone could be a touch more aggressive. I think he could also uh, be expanding a little bit more, it looks like. All right, cool. Looks like he's going to be expanding to the bottom left. That's fine. Uh, getting a little bit caught off guard, per usual. But already we're starting to hit a point where we're realizing we don't actually need this natural so much anymore. I don't think that... Oh, there it is. There's a command center floating up to the north. Yeah, this is going to end up looking fine. Um, if any of you were playing a normal Terran vs. Protoss, you could take this first and then back up and take your natural expansion. Again, the Fun Day Monday uh, requirements are a little bit more rigid than the usual thing. Um, they're more rigid than your casual average game because of the fact that if you mess up, I'm not going to watch your replay. I'm not going to accept that. But we can clearly see that there's some some juicy bits here. There's some tasty morsels in there. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, eaten Rocky Road ice cream. Uh, I'm, I'm in it for the marshmallows. I mean, I know there's a bunch of chocolate ice cream around it, but, you know, there's those morsels there. Just like that early expand. Man, I make good points. 
Here is, of course, the non-expanded to natural. Here's the factory doing his good old scouting thing. Awkwardly, embarrassingly, floating out of range. Probes being queued up like mad with this few things say macro, like queued up, unbuildable probes. Uh, here is the ghost. Ooh, trying to do a little drop. Ooh, we get blink. We have extended thermal lance. We have the plus one ground weapon. We have a ghost trying to make its way. Oh, huge army coming up. And if we look at the resource counter, 174 for Protoss. <gasps> T-bone, T-bone, T-bone. Look out, miss. Look out. Oh, he's sending things to mine gas. Oh, please. I need it. Oh, <laughs> whomp. Now, I want to know, I want to know how, now here's, here's another interesting example of timing in a game, this is an important idea, um, how long was this typed on T-Bone's screen? Because you notice that the Womp pops up right there, uh, unless he's a really fast typist, I mean, Womp is a little bit of an awkward word to type. Um, I also want to note a couple of things, 175 food turns into... 131. Oh, that's rewarding. How many kills? 44! A good number of kills. He got a one-shot commander upgrade. Nice. So there he is. He's doing a little rat-tat-tatting. Gonna go ahead and do a little bit of damage. And here comes uh, Miscellaneous's force. Here comes the big Marine Marauder troop of T-Bone. And ladies and gentlemen, this might be what we call a wrap. Oh, the double EMP. See you later, army. It was nice knowing you, Protoss, of course. Hanging out a little bit, warping in some um, cannons with no power. Uh, just, you know, trying to hang in there at least a little bit longer. And then, as we advance triumphantly forward, we get a good sense of what's going on. Looks like a day night daily viewership is going to be doing a good job. Doing a great little job here. Fantastic. Fantastic. Miscellaneous has left the game. T-Bone. Thank you for giving us a nice little introduction to what's up with the no expanding. Now, I want to let you all in on a little bit of a secret. A secret that uh, unfortunately did not come to fruition in the course of perusing through the myriad of uh, replays. Man, that was a hell of a sentence. <sighs> mm, my textual prowess knows no end. But um, this was the motivation for this uh, Fun Day Monday. There are not that many good, just space controlling power units. Like in StarCraft 1, if you put four lurkers at the top of a ramp, it could actually defend against Infinity Marines pretty adequately. Or if there were a whole bunch of mines that you planted, they just really couldn't move through there that easily, right? It was a way to just sort of lock down the amount of space. But in StarCraft 2, it's kind of like, well, I'm going to build five roaches to hold off this attack, and if his attack's bigger, then I'm going to need five more roaches. You can't just build five roaches and hold off Infinity Marines, much to Zerg's dismay. That was, of course, be the alpha version of the Roach. That was one food, had two armor, healed at the rate that it does, burrowed with the upgrade without being burrowed and healed faster on creep, and didn't even come with a speed upgrade. It was just that fast. That's what I call the alpha Roach, baby. Um, but in StarCraft II, again, you just have to make the units to be able to stay alive. So I'm thinking, well, if you're going to be making the units anyways, why not expand all over the place to, like, disparate corners of the map and do a lot more emphasis on counterattacking and splitting up his army and trying to be more mobile. Instead of doing this, well, I'm going to expand my natural into a close-by base. I'm going to build a huge army, and it's going to sit. It's just going to help me stay alive. I want to get a little bit more variety. So let's look at some other cool strategies that we end up seeing um, and how they end up integrating with this thought process of no natural expansion. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this one. This is a great little game on Lost Temple between Megumi Stars... And Romulus. All right, Romulus. Yes, Romulus is the day nine daily viewer here. We actually want to go ahead and go into the Romulus cam. Uh, he's going to go ahead and uh, making some SCVs. To go ahead and look at the APM. Look at this, 25 APM. I want to let you know to execute the strategy that Romulus is going to be doing this game. You don't need to be a fast player. You really don't. Uh, there is the barracks going down. They're scouting his opponent. Of course, he's making a, a nice little design. It's good to be artistic. Ooh, spiking up to 66 APM. Looking good, Romulus. And as we see, no gas geysers going down. What a telltale sign. Orbital command coming up. Very good stuff. Continuing to scout around his opponent's base. You see Magumi stars uh, for getting a second pylon on accident. Whoopsie daisy probe just sort of hanging out. Uh, Zealot popping up. Looks like maybe a stalker could be incoming at some point in time. Uh, yes, good. A command center by Romulus. Romulus. 
Where are you going to be going with that command center? Let's go ahead and get the uh, Romulus cam. All right, cool. He's scrolling around. Good. It looks like we have some barracks. I see some bunkers uh, going down at the front and a factory coming up. I love it. Now, I want everyone to begin thinking what could possibly be going on. Uh, well, it looks like we're playing some musical chairs with the orbital command. Good. Good. There's another barracks going down. Psych! He's not going to be building the barracks. Uh, he's going to go ahead and use his map hack to check what's on his opponent's ramp. <laughs> I'm just getting Romulus. Okay. I'm just playing, man. Uh, a classic Terran build order, which is to get the orbital command and then not realize that you can't lift it. Again, there's one of those things that uh, you you only make the mistake once, but whenever you do make the mistake, it, it you feel it. <laughs> Such as the building the planetary fortress in my main, and then realizing you just can't lift the planetary fortress. And then you have a planetary fortress defending the trees right here. There you go. Absolute amazing tree defense. If he tries to sneak a Nidus Worm back there, there won't be any space because there's a planetary fortress blocking it. That's what we call a space-controlling structure, folks. That's right. So, of course, the Orbital Command cannot carry any SCVs, but that's fine. It will just go ahead and um, wheel its way on over to the left. And I don't know if you've ever seen this. Uh, in America, um, and I think this is uh, particularly because we are American, in our grocery stores, um, you can rent a, like, a, like a chariot, like an electronic little chair that you just sit in and you, you just sort of... You know, and you're like, oh, look, there's the basil. So that way, while we're getting our food, we don't actually have to stand up. So that way we can get immediately back to sitting and eating. That's an American thing. I'm trying to check if there's any uh, references to that in Europe, uh, if anyone has that. Because Europe, everything's weird in Europe in the grocery stores. Like the, the grocery carts, the wheels, all four wheels turn. In America, only two of our wheels turn. I don't know. In Europe, you can go sideways with your things. But in America, we have a thing you sit in that, again, can totally do this. So anytime I see the, the orbital command making its way across, it's just like that, that, you know, that lady in the grocery store who's just thought, you know what, no, I'm not standing today. And here she is perusing through. Perhaps she might invest in some, um, perhaps she's on the way to the, to, to the parsley aisle. Maybe she's getting some condiments. I don't know, some, some mayonnaise. Uh, maybe she's Canadian. Maybe she just likes mayonnaise on everything because you Canadians certainly do. But either way, you know, we're seeing two starports go down. Hey, you know what? We're seeing Romulus not quite be able to manage his money so well. We're seeing it kind of spike up. It's hitting the thousands. But you know what? It's his first time. Give him a break. Romulus is a strategist. He scans. He sees that there is a pile on there. He is going to be going for air units with a solid defense at the front. Brilliant play. Romulus is clearly feeling in a good lead right now. And what happens if he drops the island? He can use these banshees to pull back to defend. And then, while defending this, he can immediately pull back here and attack this expansion. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Getting some more supply depots, but at least, you know, these two didn't get supply blocked. He's building these. And, I mean, we can easily transition into Vikings. We can transition into another expansion over here if we so desire. Uh, I mean, hell, Planetary Fortress here would actually be a pretty brilliant play. He has two Banshees out. Now, a lot of you would be thinking, um, you know, I might want these two Banshees to... Uh, yeah, look great. Another Command Center going down. I might want these two Banshees to, to attack. But a lot of times it's better to wait until you have the Cloak upgrade. There's the other scan. He's seeing a good amount of warp dates. There's one Zealot Research. from... Wait. Magumi Stars. Wanted to make sure I got his name right. Also have to do the opponent's justice. It's important to... Uh... Oh, shit. So he has the cloak upgrade, but there's an observer, which means that, um... This is gonna be... This is gonna be a little bit more difficult uh, than we'd assumed. And again, I want you to know, only 53 a a a APM. There's 50... You don't, you don't need to be fast uh, to let this happen to you. This is... This is to Anyone can do this. This is totally... Uh, 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 you know, just the rags to riches style. This can be bronze to master. Uh, Romulus saying that directly counters my entire strategy, lol. Uh, was going for day nine, fun day Monday. Um, that's very nice of Romulus doing a little bit of promotion for me. And then, of course, uh, the instant, the instant he lets his opponent know why he's able to kill his whole fucking base, then he goes... Well, of course, never give up, never surrender. You could have saved the starport, man. You got to do the explanations. Anytime you're giving an excuse for why you let a whole bunch of things in your base, do it after you save this building. I mean, come on. Come on, Romulus. 
got to work on your on your complain timing. So there he's going to run away. The barracks is going to run away. That's fine. He has two geysers going. He's going to have maximum gas in him. Uh, so he's going to... Oh, yes. Remember, he's going to stick to his guns. He's going to go ahead and build that... Um, build those starports. Stick to that air. Here they're coming up here. Uh, there's not an expansion over here. No, certainly not. No, Romulus trying to do the hiding. It's going to be a little ineffective because the SCV has just sort of said, Hey, over here, over here. That's fine. Orbital Command moving down. Part of us are wishing that there was a planetary fortress here to go ahead and defend both these geysers and the trees. But in the meantime, we do see that there's a starports out. And let's go ahead and go to the everyone cam. Now here comes uh, a huge force of stalkers from Megumi Stars. He popped up into the main. Uh, Romulus is landing. Romulus is rich. He's so rich, he's making his three banshees. Here comes the Observer. Does the Observer see? He suspects nothing. Magumi Star is going to scout his own natural expansion just to make sure. Oh, and there's the blink up. And here he is. Okay, now these Banshees are going to have to do some amazing... Oh, going to have to do some amazing defense. Uh, Magumi Stars is... He's going to need to get... He needs to... Oh. He's, he's going to need to blink across. He's just going to need to... Just, oh. Uh, he's he's going to need to... He's just... Oh. He's just... You need to just blink across... And then, and then we're going to see some amazing defense from the Banshees. He just... Megumi, he needs to... Just blink, just... Um, just needs to get across... Oh, there's the Observer kind of getting repelled a little bit. But that's fine, because Megumi starts in a great spot. He just needs to... He's just going to get right across. He's going to get into this area. Nope. Um, he's just going to have to hit the blink... The click on the, here... He's just, okay, well, oh, Romulus with some great defense here, and, and oh, Magumi Stars is, he just needs to, no, oh, oh, success, Magumi, okay, okay, you just need to do that again, just with all, you know, 20 of them, all right, okay, Magumi, all right, all right, okay, he has to pull back, there needs to be an observer, but that's fine, once he gets the observer, he's going to be in a very good situation, and Romulus sticking to the plan, sticking it to Magumi Stars, Unleashing the volley of the pain, letting him do it, letting him know, bringing down the thunder. Oh my gosh, Thunder Magumi, Thunder Magumi! Oh yes, blinking. Oh yes, oh getting over there. Oh, now we just got to get to the island. Come on, Magumi, you got it. You got it, Magumi. Fly away, fly away, little Magumi. Oh my God. All right, come on, come on, Magumi. Just gather your forces. Gather your forces, Magumi. Focus. You got this, Megumi. Focus, focus, focus. Focus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Every time I see a stalker, I just imagine a soccer player in third grade so excited to run somewhere. And all he wants to do is kick the ball. It doesn't matter what direction it goes in. They're so excitable. Oh, look at him. Look at him. They're getting pumped. They're getting pumped. Come on. Come on. He. Come on. You just need... Oh! Okay. You just... Okay. You just need to get you just fly away little Megumi stars fly away fly away Megumi fly away Megumi that's all you need to okay all right okay so he's gonna he's gonna get it from the other side oh yes that's what I'm talking about and Megumi you just you just need to you need to hit this B button, and you just need to get over there. Right now, Romulus, you're the Day 9 Daily Viewer. Man, you got this. You gotta be careful. Here comes the good defense. He's gonna move over with everything. Here comes everything. Oh! Oh! Here it, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah! Five up there. Five. Get him. Get him. Get him. Come on. Come on. Yeah, the two more. Two at a time. Come on. Single file line, stalkers. Six inch voices. Here comes Romulus. With the absolutely no micro micro for the win. And then the observer is not here anymore. Get out of there, Magumi Stars. Get out of there. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Alright. Well, Magumi Stars happens to the best of us. There's the observer going, oh, I guess those things killed me. And, I mean, again, a great example of a strategy that almost, that almost, you know, flowed um, beautifully. You know, like, like one of those porcelain pitchers. Just, you don't even hear the liquid coming out of it. That's how smooth Romulus' strategy almost was. Um, and, again, you don't need to be fast to, to you just 62 APM is all that took. So, I think that that, that uh, though, was a little unfortunate and I guess was not... 
rehearsed, I would say, I think that that is, that that's a good example of thinking outside the box. Taking the islands, doing a mass banshee emphasis, sort of defending there. Might want to have some spotters along the edges. Might even want to invest in a raven and, and a viking or something like that. Um, but then when we saw the Blink Stalker Micro, it reminded me of when uh, I got my first parakeet. His name was Michael. Uh, my brother and I, actually, we, we got a whole bunch of names. And we wrote them on 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 piece of paper and put them in a hat. Uh, we had things like like Jolly. Um, um, uh, what were some other ones? Pocket. Uh, what were some other ones? Um, Tummy. We had some cute names. We just chose like Michael. <laughs> it was like Frank. Frank the parakeet. But but he would always Michael would always sit on my finger and I was like, come on, Michael. And I, I would be like, fly, fly, come on, come on, Megumi Star style blink stalker, just fly away, fly away. And then I would just like take him and I would just fling him and he would go. F- and he would just land back on the couch. So I just picked the bird up and go, come on, fly away, Michael. <laughs> um, and then I'd pick him up and he'd shit on my hand because that's what parakeets do. So you know what? Um, to 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 each his own. To each Megumi stars his own uh, blink stalker techniques. But you know what? Honestly, you got to use the smart blink to get onto them islands. Let's go ahead and look at another good example uh, of the um, the no the no uh, expand to the natural build. Uh, how about let's do let, here's a, here's a good one here's a good one here's a great one. Um, all right, cool. We have Zaga in the bottom left. If 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 it was like Z A G A, that would be Zaga. But it is X A G G A H Zaga. He's right here, he's spawning in the bottom left is the super fucking yellow Zerg, and we have Phoenix. Which sounds a lot like some disease that you would get in the original Oregon Trail games. Like your grandmother has been diagnosed with Phoenix. Oh, and she tried to ford the river and died. Uh, Zaga, of course, going to be up against that disease. He knows the way to play. He's not going to be trying to be the farmer in this game. He will be the banker, despite only getting times one to his score multiplier. If any of you are catching this reference, you're a hero. Uh, we do see that this drone by Zaga is advancing towards the top left. Now look at that timing. Oh my gosh. Focus. Oh, focus. Timing. Thinking. All right, there comes Zaga. And look at this, 304 minerals. Oh, what angelic timing. Oh my gosh. I mean, the angels look down from heaven and they go... Our children have done well, my lord. Like, cross map to the top left base, expanding with four minerals left over. Oh, yes, Zaga. Yes. Yes, indeed. I love any build that is well-timed, no matter how smart or dumb or awful or guaranteed method to lose. It is awesome. There is the spawning pool going down. There is the gas. Fenix. Fenix, of course, uh, a little bit of a rash there. He's going to be adding on the cybernetics core because Fenix does sound like a disease, but we don't know what disease it is. We have to define the symptoms as they come along. There's the queen coming out from Zaga. And again, look at the gas. He can even begin getting the zergling speed very quickly. Where's the zergling? He can begin getting it very quickly. It looks like he's going to go ahead and make another queen here. Ooh, he's going to hide a roach warren. Oh, Zaga, you sly raccoon. Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Feverish Phoenix is going to be adding on a second gas. He's going to be going for a warp gate because he knows how to get number one in the master division. For warp gate every game, every time. Robo uh, going down as well. Uh, warp gate now finishing up. We do see that there is... Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Zaga is going oh yeah oh yeah poke 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 take him down take him down getting it done getting it done taking it out and now with this huge force he's gonna hang out for a bit all right he's gonna sneak up to the side what does fenix suspect absolutely nothing yes in the fenix cam he's scrolling up and then right and he's gonna go ahead and build something what is that getting constructed there oh it's an observer good Double chrono boosting, scrolling up, scrolling down, scrolling up, scrolling down. And you might think that that's because he's scrolling, but really Fenix is going, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now in terms of celebration, uh, nodding your head, yes. Good way to celebrate. This is how Jinro does it when he wins games in the GSL. He's like, okay, 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 okay. You know, he does it like that. Doing it a little slowed and stuttered. Fenix style. Mm. Yes. 
It's a little, uh, it's a little awkward. Um, doing the uncoordinated double fist pump is probably the 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 least socially appropriate. The yeah, all right. But that's fine, because you know what? To each his own. That's the big lesson we're learning today. Fenix is going to be expanding there. Robo Bay going down. Wants to get some Colossi up pretty soon. But Zaga... Oh, he's doing a spine crawler push. Fenix, come on, Fenix. Fenix, look out, Fenix. Oh, no! Getting a symptom of runny nose. Oh, runny creep. There's creep in my sinuses. Fenix now advancing forward, taking it out, and is caught completely off guard, and by surprise, oh yes, Zaga doing the smart thing, noticing this entire play, Zaga has complete and total map control. Again, it's a pretty cool example of how to be successful with the style of play. So it looks like there is the uh, Colossus going down, there is the Warpin, getting more Colossus, needs to get that range upgrade. Now, this sort of spine crawler play is actually surprisingly effective. Um, just in general to have spine crawlers outside of Protoss' base because it's just so difficult to deal with because they have so many freaking hit points. I mean, a Hydralisk is 100 minerals and has 80 life. Spine crawler is 100 minerals and has 300 life. Easy peasy Fabrizi Parshi. It looks like he's taking that down. He's going to try to swing around the backside. He's going to go ahead and do a little bit of self-mutiny. <laughs> is that his own Colossus that he attacked? He did a significant amount of damage to that Colossus. Look at that poor guy. Ooh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Teach him a lesson, Fenix. Just want to bring him a little bit into the little jaundice region of yellow. There is, of course, the spine crawlers making their way over. Not the greatest economy over here to the side. Uh, going to go ahead and get a spire. Nice, nifty. And again, nice, clean, simple example of a strategy being executed fairly well. Uh, it looks like Fenix is going to go ahead and just avoid everything. Uh, it looks like Fenix is in denial. He's just going to hang out here and he's just going to say, I don't have a base. No. Uh, as usual, as just a consistent theme uh, today, um, Zaga is going to have absolutely no defense in the slightest. Pretty typical. The Queen getting taken down. Um, layer, uh, I would say not doing too hot. Here's the advance up. Uh, moving in for the kill. And, you know, this might even seem like somewhat of an awkward thing, but I want to highlight to you the fact that you are guaranteed to kill this off, and you have this extremely easily defendable base right next to you. How awesome is that? That is great news. Thank you so much, Bennett. Mm. Thank you so much. Cleaning everything up. Looks like we have a pylon here. Uh, Colossi trying to come back. Uh, there's the GG, and look, he just got eliminated. Don't even have to encounter a main fight. See, we've seen two games that are kind of cool, right? We saw the first game uh, that was awesome. That was a good example by T-Bone. Here's another great example by Zaga! All right, he just easily did a counterattack after he took that third base with the crisp, most pristine of timing. Let's look at some more unorthodox styles of play. Let's go into a game on Scrap Station. Let's end up, uh, let's see if we can find this one... Um, yeah, I think that this is going to be it. All right, now, if you want unorthodoxy, all right, ask Kanada, uh, which not to be confused uh, with Kanada from the movie Akira. Oh my gosh, look at that, the refinery going down. Yes, indeed. Getting an, a surprisingly early refinery. Kanada clearly has something in store for us. Little curious what that is going to end up being. It looks like he's moving this SCV to somewhere. Looks like he's moving it. Oh, an engineering bay. Oh my goodness, Kanada. Okay, he's mining some gas right now. I'm sensing. I got, I got a little bit of tingling in me. I got some spider sense going on. So Blinker is hiding the gateway behind his base. Kind of a cool choice. A little interesting. Again, it doesn't really matter where your warp gates is. Doesn't really matter where those end up going down. So he's hiding them in the back. And here we see you cannot expand to your natural, but you certainly can expand to his motherfucking natural, Kanada. Doing good. Now, as a Protoss, when you arrive in this base, you're going to be a little confused. And as you, if you're me watching this replay for the first time, you're going to be a little bit confused. Kanada, please. What is it? that you are planning on doing. Kanata! Get him, Kanata! Bam! Building a planetary fortress and expanding at the same time! Yes! 
notice. All right, let's look at some strategy, folks. Let's talk about transitions. You want transitions? Let's check out a motherfucking transition. I got so excited I drooled. Look at this. You want to see this action? I'm hitting my B button. I'm going to rewind. Let's see this double take time. What did he do? He loaded up. He loaded up into that command center. He loaded up the SCVs. And what does he do? He unloads them here so that way it's a little bit of a quicker move to the freaking expansion. That's right. I'm going to fly my command center into your base to drop my SCVs to transfer it to my expansion at your natural. Oh, Kanada! Kanada! Tetsuo! Kanada! And here's the planetary fortress out. Good luck. Have fun, Zealot. Bam! 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 Oh! Oh! Did you see the three shot? Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh my gosh! Amazons from Diablo 2 eat your heart out. Try shot my ass. Thank you, Planetary Fortress. That's what I'm talking about. Just, of course, in range of the Planetary Fortress. And notice how seamlessly he can go from mining at his expansion to Planetary Fortress pushing at the same time. Notice how seamless this transition is. So now Blinker has a choice. Does he try to stay alive? Does he not expand here? Uh, looks like, oh my god, Blinker. Blinker's taking an expansion. Very good, Blinker. He's going to the bottom left corner of the map. There's the Observer continuing to be warped in. Blast, blast, doing some good damage, taking everything out. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get the transfer, but one zealot! One zealot! How could I have been so foolish? Kanata, with no defense at your expansion, one zealot can spoil your plans. Kanata. Kanata, one zealot. One zealot. Oh, one. One zealot. One zealot. Pro five probes. Better get the gas. If we can get gas up, we can... Fuck it. Just fly. Fly away. Fly away, little bird. All right, he's going to be moving around. He's going to try to do the swing back around Rue, but one zealot. How, how could I have been so blind? All right, Blinker has half a base, but he's taking another base. There's some cannons going down. Oh, my gosh. All right, and he is going to he's going to be re-expanding here. He needs to land. He needs to morph it to an orbital. Well, he doesn't actually have a barrack, so he's going to... Well, he's not going to expand. He's actually just going to drop off these two zealots first. He's coming back. This is much like that problem um, that you have uh, with, you know, the goat and the tiger and the and the and the head of cabbage, and you're trying to get it across the river, and you only have one command center, so you can't have the tiger and and the goat left on one end of the island. I mean, Konata is a real pioneer and a problem solver, so he is going to be able to work through this. He's getting the double gas because again, he needs to get enough gas to be able to. Um, he needs to get the gas to upgrade. That's right. He needs to upgrade. He needs to get these upgrades. There we go. He needs to make sure that he gets the plus one. I mean, hell, high sec auto tracking would be good for this planetary fortress to maybe kill that pilot. It might be a little too far, but still, it's a good thing to have. So in the meantime, all right, here. This is this is the important thing. Okay, so Stargate's coming out from Blinker. So what we're going to see from Kanata... I mean, I'm just going to fast forward through this uh, part of the game a little bit. So what we're going to see Kanata do is Kanata is going to have to take the initiative to begin expanding to the mainland. He's going to need to begin, I don't know, making SCVs, maybe re-expanding here. Um, uh, he's, he, I mean, he has to worry about air. Okay, good. That's a good first step, but he needs to build it not right in front of the other guy's army. So it looks like he's going to... Um, it, I mean, Kanata, I think, is doing a smart thing, and he's teching towards air right now. He's going to try to go on the offensive as much as possible. He doesn't, he doesn't really want a turtle. There's some Void Rays here giving him some trouble. Um, so, but again, it's a good thing that he's, you know, beginning to, to think about expanding to the outskirts of the map. And he is also beginning to focus on air. Getting, getting that number of Banshees for Kanata is, is very strong. As we see, his Banshee count is getting, is getting higher. Uh, he, he's, he's doing the, he's, he's also expanding more, um, uh, you know, because Kanata knows that air control is going to be essential in, in a position like this. So, so Kanata is, of course, beginning to get those air upgrades. He's beginning to begin to make sure his air force is of adequate strength. He needs to continue to put pressure on. There's some good harassment by Kanata going on right now. He's, he's doing a good job. Oh, wow, look at that great snipe 
with the cloak timing on the on the observer because he doesn't want to you know get, have any of his banshees get picked off. You gotta you gotta maintain good unit retention um, when you're at this. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, Blinker might might have a little bit of an economic lead, but I I mean, with the amount of pressure that Kanata's putting on, I mean, his food, I mean, the food counts are are pretty telling of, of the, the comeback that Kanata's. I mean, he's he's gonna he's expanding. Uh, he's uh, well, he does have the 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 um. So I mean, there's he's gonna try. He's fine. Don't worry about it. It's. So, again, ma maintaining the aggression, maintaining that edge, getting in your opponent's face. You hear me talk about a lot of pressure in the usual dailies. Uh, you hear me about t trash talking. Uh, not, not something I necessarily approve of, but, but you know, again, when you're at this sort of... Uh, uh, you want to put your opponent on, on, on tilt. Um, uh, Blinker is... Uh, he, he's looking a little slim. Uh, I mean, he has, he has uh, his main base again. And um, there's some Korean getting typed up, um, and Blinker, wow, interestingly, um, so that's a good example of when you're under pressure, uh, of, of just making sure that you, you, you continue to think clearly and always try to put pressure back on your opponent with, with harassment. And expanding, and you know, sometimes when I when when I watch these replays, I, I I'm just like fuck you guys. Um, let's go on to our last game of the day. Let's go on to our last game. So let's go ahead and watch the final game. M might even actually throw in another one. This is actually going a little bit longer. Yeah, you know, what? let's throw down. Let's throw down another one. Let's throw down this one. This is going to be great. This is fantastic. There we go. Midnight Mist. Midnight Mist uh, in the top right. There is... <laughs> what? Smutnar Zekka. Uh, sm 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 <laughs> I, I promise you, I did not try to read that uh, before right now. That's a silly name. That name is silly. Because, because again, I mean, in terms of, you know, everyone's always like, so, so where'd you get your name from? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's from a lyric of a song I like from a band that I listen to with my headphones. And, oh, I totally get that. It's an album. Oh, it's a character from an anime that was a little bit badass, right? Um, um, but, Smut, Smutna, or Zekka, Smutna, or Zekka, Smutna, or Zekka. Again, oh, putting a base in your base. Again, can't take your own natural. Shakura's Plateau, where natural expansions are very easy to defend. Midnight Mist is about to get his night pissed on by Smutna, or Zekka, who's expanding to the natural. There's a pylon going down by Midnight Mist. Um, who's gonna be soon getting uh, a, a very, very nice fist in his in his eyes uh, once this expansion finishes? Um, I, I, my freestyle rap skills are perhaps not up to par. Uh, I, I have two rhymes with uh, mist, I guess. So if you guys could just type more things that rhyme with mist, that would be that would be good. Um, uh, I just need to make sure that I can I can keep up my my wicked beats. There's the drones now advancing cross map. Let's see how smutna earth. Heck, uh, about to be. Uh, oh, putting the pressure on, and he doesn't... S Wait a minute. Is there a creep outside my base? Is there? Does he even notice? Is he? Does he see? Midnight Mist, the Red Mist descends. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes, the creep to Midnight Fist. Oh, my God. His sight line, Mist, M-I-S-S-T, Mist, this creep. His sight missed the creep. It's always inappropriate for your wicked rhymes to have to be typed. Um, there is the force field. Now, force field, though good at stopping zerglings, not good at stopping giraffe heads from poking their way up. Poke, 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 poke. Putting the pressure on. There's more zealots popping out. And look at Smutnarzek's expansion. He's getting two queens there. He's continuing to do the vomitage. Spine crawler's doing a good amount of damage. That's great. Yes, getting out of there. Oh my gosh. 
Now this, of course, a lot of times you throw down force fields uh, to block Zerglings. In this circumstance, you threw down force fields to say, I'm automatically going to prevent myself from making that mistake again. You know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know... Um, uh, you know, like locking locking yourself out of Facebook so you don't keep checking the photos of that pretty, pretty girl who said those things that, I don't know, was kind of a mixed message. I mean, she just seemed so into you. I don't, may, but, I don't know, but then she always talks about that other guy. I don't, I'm just force fielding the ramp, fuck it. So this is a good play by him. I like this quite a bit. Uh, looks like very interesting. That's tactful. I think that's appropriate. Uh, that's also another good one. Uh, looks like um, there is the uh, extra gateway going down, getting the second assimilator to support his ability to make units that require gas. Uh, going to be building a cybernetics core soon, so that way he can build units that make gas. Again, look at Smutnars. Uh, he is going to go ahead and just take this left expansion. Uh, looks like the creep. Oh, the creep doth expand into there. Get him. Get him. Pick him off. Pick him off. Kill him. And, oh my god, Smutnar Zekka misses the Transfuse, the Zealots do manage to delay this push by a little bit. A lot of pressure going on right now. I mean, seriously, in the Smutnar Zekka cam, he is now advancing around the back. He's going to swing those Zerglings back around to the back side. Oh my gosh! <gasps> the destructible rocks have been destructed. We hear another queen getting produced. We do see that Spire... Mm, excuse me, going down right now. There are the Zealots beginning to work their way. They're going to spank those rocks hard. <laughs> on the moon, nerds have their pants pulled down and are spanked with moon rocks. Again, if you caught that reference, you're the man. So, of course, there he is, spanking that moon rock. Gonna go ahead and take that down. Looking good. Uh, looks like... Oh, Zerglings get snapped in half. Oh, what a tragedy. Smutnar Zekka is fine. He's gonna be continuing to expand the creep. He has to strangle. Oh, no! Oh, no! Smutnar Zekka! Midnight Mist! Oh, getting his little pain brought down on the other guy. Killing off a lot of drones and the... Oh, no! Oh, my God! He just attacked it. Oh, oh. That was close. Oh, my gosh. Now, again, it's a very, very, very important thing to note the following, you guys. This is very, very important to note. The most... Effective counter in StarCraft 2 is to go fucking kill him, okay? I I know a lot of you will, for instance, hear something like, how do I deal with the mortals? Choose to build zealots, dude, right? And you'll go, intriguing. Given the armor type of the zealots, it shall be most effective against relinquishing me from the pain of those little crabuloids, uh, the immortals. But, but uh, for instance, if someone says, how do you, how do you counter a, a guy who expands to your natural and builds a bunch of uh, 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 spine crawlers, well, you, you, you go fucking kill him because he expanded to your natural and is building spine crawlers. A very effective counter is just winning. So Smutner Zekka has about one and a half bases. But the Mutalisks, oh no, Midnight Mist, look out, look out, Midnight Mist, look out, all right, oh, the Phoenix, getting taken down, there are five Mutalisks out right now, on the resource counter, we see red, we see Midnight Mist, doing a good amount of damage, gonna go ahead and take out that Best Beam Geyser, this is going very, very well, looks like he's retaking this, Midnight, oh, Smutner, Zekka continuing to expand, he has exactly... Seven mutas, and that's it. Does he have a pool? He can begin making zerglings. Midnight Mist! Oh no! Smutner Zekka is going to be advancing forward. He's going to be advancing forward. He's going to be advancing forward. He's going to try to do the damage. He's going to try to swing around to the backside. We have one more replay we're doing after this. Keep in mind, Smutner Zekka. He can take him down. Oh no! Oh, the muta counterattack when you're expanding across the middle of the map. How on earth does this lose a Zerg? Well, you lose if your opponent just decides to go kill you. Oh, genius. I'm so, I'm so smart. You guys, I have a TV show. I have a TV show, you guys. Feeling good. So, of course, we do see the blast in time getting taken down. There's a spawning pool getting unbuilt. There is the roach warren getting very close to being constructed. The burrow coming up. <gasps> Oh, I know what you're doing, Smutnar Zekker. You don't have a base anymore, but you have the you have the fire in your heart. I believe in you. And I believe we have one more replay, so we're gonna speed this thing up. Of course, expanding again. I love this guy. He is so cool. Smutnar Zekker only has eleven mutilists against seventeen stalkers, six zealots, and a pack of sacrificed overlords. Uh, but where are the mutilists? 
Oh, it looks like they've been doing a little bit of pain. A little bit of pain bringing. Here come the roaches. Get them. Get them. Get them, Smut. Or Zekka. Get them. Look out. Be careful. Be careful, Smut. Meta. You're losing everything so fast. And there's the Guardian Shield coming up. Roaches continuing to try to contribute to the fight. The drone count is painfully low. All right. Midnight Mist. Midnight Mist. Look out. There's so many drones. And the drones are actually very powerful. The drones are actually very, very beastly. And the roaches trying to do as much damage as possible. Alright, they're doing a little bit of damage. And there's more roaches coming out. And his bow just finished. Oh, Smutner Zekka. Oh my gosh. With 14 drones versus 16 probes at minute 16. That's always one of those things that I want to see in one of those strategy guides. You know, like maybe if you're on Facebook and you see one of those like Ultra Super Masters Strategy Secrets Guide Secrets book. And you click and it's like approximately two probes per minute is an adequate rate to substantially increase your mining time without hindering your ability to build a very powerful army. Uh, this guide was written by Kermit the Frog. Um... But, you know, like, like it is a little unusual, I guess I would say. They go to all one probe a minute. Uh, oh, it's minute five? Let's get probe number five. That's good. Uh, by the way, apparently we have just passed 10,000 viewers on the live stream. Wow. There's five digits worth of you. Wow, it's... Thank you, guys. That's... Wow, 10,000 10, people are hearing me say this right now. Wow. Um, well, I want you to know that I have this brother uh, named Nicholas Tasteless Plot, Nicholas Alexander Plot, and he um, he plugs things such as thehandsomenerd.com. And you know what? You know what? That shameless gene rests in me too. Go to theshortyawards.com and vote for me. Go to gaming. Go to shortyawards.com now. And follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash day9tv, and vote for me on the Shorty Awards. I want to win. I... I want, listen, you guys, I need to win. A guy named Shawners is first. No, no, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let that happen. I need all the men, the women, the dogs, the cats, the chickens, the tigers, the bears, the zombies. Do it, please. Thank you, and look at my admins. My admins sh turned the chat stream off. They turned it off so that way they could spam. Propaganda is spreading. I should start up a political party called the Uniden Fighting Party. Oh my god, it would be so good. Smutner Zekka going to be advancing forward. Going to be heading out. Smutner Zekka. There's Smutner Zekka. Oh my gosh, the drone Smutner. Are you crazy building drones there, Smutna? He's building drones at the natural expansion because he's bold. He is made out of balls. There he is, and it looks like Midnight Mist is advancing forward. This is a lot of stalkers, but it looks like the Mutilus, the double Mutilus. Five kills from each of them. The Burrow, the Unburrow, the Shoot, the Shoot, the Burrow, the, 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 the Unburrow, the Shoot, the Shoot. Give him the shoot, Smutna! Give him the burrow, Smutna! Give him the drone, Smutna! Give him the unburrow, Smutna! Give him the burrow, Smutna! Give him the unburrow, Smutna! Give him the burrow, Smutna! Give him the unburrow, Smutna! Give him that burrow, Smutna! Give it to him! Give him the burrow! Or kill him! Or just kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Attaboy, attaboy, Smutna! Attaboy, Smutna or Zekka! That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, that's so good, smut. Now I'm into it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling fancy, feeling fine. By the way, anytime I see someone's alias, I always test to see if it would work with my last name. Smutna plot. Smutna. 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 What would my child have to be to be a qualified smutna? This is my daughter. This is Smutna plot. Uh, she she is a, a maid who refuses to clean. She is a smutna. This is smutna. Uh, looks like Smutna gonna go ahead and do a little bit of pain bringing. Gonna go ahead and unleash the hammer. Smacking down. Just just give him that burrow. Give him that burrow. That's right. Midnight Mist. Feeling a bit pissed. He cannot believe this. Oh. <laughs> Write that down, folks. That could go on the fridge. Going on the fridge. My mommy would be so proud. Alright, and it looks like... And, uh-oh, uh-oh, all right, that's fine, that's fine, he has more stalkers, but just give him the burrow, smart enough, give it to him.
give it to him. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Yep, and there. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Smutna. Yes, yes indeed. Yes indeed. And there come the roaches. See you later, Midnight Mist. Too bad. And look at him. By the way, big, big shout out to Midnight Mist for after having a game as wild as that for being like, good game. You win. Good game. No, like, oh, good game. Oh! And then he leaves uh, just, you know, just playing it manly. You know, doing it manly style. Now, let's go ahead and find the last uh, fun day Monday. Uh, what is it? It is going to be where it... Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. What? Uh, how do I how do I undo it? Do I do it by date? Oh, there we go. Um, it was a PVZ, I believe. It was a PVZ. There we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have just hit six replays for this week's Fun Day Monday. How excited I am! I'm as excited as my shirt and sweating just as much as my shirt. Here we have mechanics. He is the day. Nine daily viewer mechanics in all caps dreamwalker um, Looks like he's our zerg enemy dreamwalker now if you want to see absolute stunningly brilliant Well executed seamless strategy comment coming out of a day nine daily viewer you watch mechanics He knows what's up. Oh my god mechanics. You're the man, but we're gonna have to blast through your game Hella 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 fast Hella fast, because hella is a word from Northern California that is spreading to the south, and also because we do not want to go over. All right. All right, doing a little typing, mid-daily, making sure things don't get out of whack. There's the robotics facility going down by mechanics, the Zergans, the Zergans, they're biting, they're biting, they're biting, they're biting, but they're times a million speed. So we're going to have to go through this very quickly. Oh my gosh, we're at 56 minutes trying to keep it under one hour. The Stargate coming up. A warp prism mechanics? You crazy, dog! We do see Dreamwalker expanding to his natural. There's the queen there continuing to add larva. There's the Roach Warren coming out. A common transition on this map when you're feeling a little bit confused or in general if you're under a little bit of pressure to get the Roach Warren out so that way you can be certain to be able to defend against any sort of early warp gate push. The Phoenix coming out. Mechanics! Are you expanding cross map to the island? Did you see the saliva? I certainly we did how embarrassing did you expand cross map to the island mechanics lol all right it looks like he's doing it because again he's going mass phoenix let's look at this unit count three phoenixes out right now there it is picking off the overlord going to the back lifting lifting moving down looks like his phoenixes are going to go to the gym because they wanted to do a little bit of lifting yes picking things off Ooh, double transfuse there looks like mechanics is continuing to defend the island expansion my god we only have two minutes left of time on this day nine daily brilliant play if you're going mass air with phoenixes our opponent is pinned to his base he must defend 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 he must defend we can continue to expand to the islands oh this might be something we could even do on lost temple where there aren't even any destructible rocks yeah i dare you i dare you get up the ramp try to come up this ramp links where are you going where are you going you trying to find something you trying to find some i'm lifting shit i'm lifting shit in your base with my phoenixes lifting them lifting them up oh zerglings you want to come up here zerglings you want to come up here get lifted links get lifted Go get him. Get him. Get him, mechanics. Get him. Lift him. Lift him. Lift him. Do it. Do it. Yes. Yes. Take it. Take it. Take it. Zap, zap, zap. Taking him down. Again, I think that this expanding to the island transition is quite clever. We even have the warp prism to be able to take this island. In the meantime, we're building up a very nice mixed force in our own main. But Zerg is actually playing surprisingly well, given the odd situation he is in. Look at how many phoenixes there are. Mass, hydralisk, spore crawler, queen. Yeah, I think that's pretty good against the phoenixes. However, he's just con Continuing to build phoenixes. Well, he was. And it looks like in the production tab, we see Storm coming out. We see a good Roach Hydra mix coming in from Dreamwalker. And all your drones! Oh, getting picked off. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time for just one second, oh my gosh, the pain that hath been wrought. And it looks like we do see there is the Psionic Storm research coming up. More warp gates coming down. Double base mining. Very cool. Building more cannons. Mechanics is not going to try to rely on a hope-based strategy. He knows the importance of going into the later stages of the game. A surprisingly even match. Surprisingly well-focused by Dreamwalker. But again, 
Mechanics is a meathead. All he wants to do is some lifting. And with zero drones mining minerals, it's what gives you a lot of gas, as we can see up there. Again, Mechanics is being very noble. Indeed, not expanding to his natural expansion. Dreamwalker advancing forward. Here we go to the resource counter. Man, despite all that harassment and great transitioning by Mechanics, he's still behind on the food. Generally okay with Protoss, but there's so much of that food that's in Phoenix. is lifting, 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 zapping, 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 killing. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here comes the warp in. See you later. Try to retreat. I bet you're going to have fun retreating, Dreamwalker. And meanwhile, Phoenix is lifting, lifting, lifting. Just taking it. It doesn't even matter. It's fine. Just getting smashed. No problem whatsoever. More pylons going down. It looks like, um, looks like, um, lifting, lifting, lifting. He just doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's feeling good. And it looks like we have a pylon. What else do we have going on here? My goodness. We have, oh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds of daily might go over. What is this building? Is this a fleet beacon? Ooh, carrier, a very good transition at this point. Want to have a very strong army. He's also going to continue to try to do damage to that southern base. We do see that that uh, plus one attack upgrade is doing a lot of damage. The Dark Shrine's coming down. A mothership. God bless you, mechanics. Do it. Do it, mechanics. Get the mothership, mechanics. Oh, no. Mechanics evil plan has been discovered. Mechanics. Mechanics, I am worried, and Mechanics loses all his probes. Will he end up spotting this other expansion? Oh, but he did manage to take that out, and here it comes. It looks like the mothership is out. The Archons have been created. The Archons! The Archons! Get him, Mechanics, get him. But this is a huge Roach Hydra army. 2-0 on the upgrades. More Roaches coming out. Advancing forward, 150 food to 190 food. Here comes the final confrontation. Oh my gosh, this is going to be an everything for mechanics. He only has one place where he can actually expand and it is super, super vulnerable. Dreamwalker is starting to take the whole map. He has the gold. He has the old island. He has his third. He has his nat. He has his main. He's even walking the islands. And it looks like Dreamwalker, it is all going to come down to this. The Phoenix is doing a lot of damage. Sucking up that whole army. Oh my gosh. And what is going on here? Archons are going in. Oh, oh, he's putting the Archons in. They're getting all sucked in. They're all getting sucked in. It's the Archon toilet. Oh, my goodness. For any of you who did not know what the Archon toilet was or is, I don't even need to explain. I just need to point to the food count. Look at the food count. Watch it with me. Watch it with me. Watch it with me. Check it. Check it. Check it out. Watch it. This is a real game. This Zerg player played quite well. The Protoss player with the Archon Toilet. 151 to 189. I'm going to slow it down. All right. Now here... Okay, notice I, I paused it. One nanosecond later, it's already dropped 20 food. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Wow. Of the run-on sentence that I called the Fun Day Monday, that was the most rewarding of periods. Wow. Thank you very much, Mechanics, for the Archon Toilet. So, that brings us to the tragic conclusion of this week's Fun Day Monday. Next week's Fun Day Monday is something extremely unusual that I hope a lot of people participate in. This week, or excuse me, next week's Fun Day Monday is going to be constraints on me and the way that I talk. For next week's Fun Day Monday, I would like you to submit to Monday at Day9.tv a constraint on the way that I must speak. For example, Yoda always begins his sentences with direct objects. Like if he saw a pretty girl, he'd be like, Mmm, hit it, I would. He always does that, you know, like a gateway he built. I would have to do that sort of thing. Uh, and I'll do this for three to five minute intervals. And whenever one of my admins gives me a new one, I have to announce it and then I have to talk like that. So it's going to be some, I guess what we call improv casting. Um, so that is what is next week's theme. Submit that to Monday at Day9.tv. Tuesday at Day9.tv is the Newbie Tuesday games. I want you to submit some games of you trying the Jinro mech style against Protoss and having some struggles. I will now go. Bye, guys.